Cinema. Welcome back to War with Cinema. I'm your host, Greg, your local metalhead, and with me is... Part of the Collector. What's up, everybody? And today you gave me... Down, down Periscope, man. I've been wanting to ask you, why did you softball me this fucking movie? Because, man, I told you going in, I said, bro, this is a lighthearted, funny movie. It's about a crew of, of Navy men. Yeah. On this old-ass rusty ship. It came out in 1996, peak, like ensemble cast that are doing like army oh this is the 90s like all-star lineup man yeah um kelsey Grammer is the lead you got rob schneider in there got comic relief well harlan williams Mm -hmm. the guy from uh the guy from armageddon max i can't remember his name in real life i I recognize all these people oh and the guy satellite Mm -hmm. what's his name satellite oh yeah yeah he's uh i forget his name too but yeah he used to be on uh mad tv or something yeah, he's been a bunch of stuff. I'm sick of list, re-listening to our podcast and we don't know the names of people. Yeah, uh, we should probably go ahead and have IMDb pulled up. I know, time. Harlan Williams. I've seen I knew him. Harlan Williams. He's in so many things. I like him. He's funny. Yeah. He plays a great character in this one, too. I do. I he's my favorite part of this. Oh, yeah, character. he is definitely the, one of the best parts. Um, So this cost $31 million to make. Really? Yeah. In 96? Shit, that's like an Avengers movie nowadays, know, bro. Right? Like, fuck. And then... Current accumulated worldwide thirty seven million. So it wasn't a loss, baby. I don't give you losses. <laughs> <laughs> so That's great. This was probably like the safest movie you could have ever given me because I don't have anything bad to say about it because it just plays it so safe. That's what I'm saying because you can't hate this movie, bro. Like <clears throat> you can't hate it. Like you may not enjoy it, but you know, you can't hate it. Like, I feel like I saw this as a kid though. Probably did. I don't remember the story but i do remember parts about it like the um the electrician yeah the fucking idiot where he keeps poking himself he has the... to fucking hold the two wires so he could talk on the radio That's um great. the cook i kind of remember parts from him yeah like i re- like glimpses i kind of remember from childhood <laughs> those are the best parts of rob schneider hey today i found a fingernail <laughs> in my soup Yesterday it was a band aid. He goes, Well, the fingernail was on the band aid, so like that's weird that it was two different days. <laughs> you found it. <sighs> Rob Schneider, I feel bad, man, because I like the more I go back and watch Rob Schneider's movies, I just feel like this poor guy has been shitted on his entire career. I was thinking that too when I was watching this. It's like, do they do it on purpose or do they like, you know what I mean? Like, because he's so young in this movie. Like, he's young in this movie. Even in the movies he stars in, like The Animal, Deuce Bigelow, like, he's still getting shit on in those movies. Yep. Like, I mean, he knows what he is and what people expect of him, so he kind of just, like, gives it to him. He's got a stand-up special on Netflix, and I watched about 15 minutes of it. Like, it was pretty good. But he doesn't, he doesn't like, he doesn't like, uh, I was just eating and I was just looking for something to watch. While oh, I, was I see. Yeah. And I, I plan on going back and finishing it, but it's like, I hope he touches on that at some point. Like, Hey, I just want to let you guys know that, uh, I know I've been something y'all have laughed at for 20 years and I just want to tell you, fuck all of you. All right. <laughs> Thanks for the money, but fuck all of you, especially Adam Sandler. Like. <laughs> Adam Sandler's probably shit on that guy worse than anybody. Probably, yeah. He puts him in the shittiest role. He literally only writes him in there as somebody to make fun of. Yep. Like That entire first Grown Ups is literally just making fun of him. Maybe he's that friend that doesn't know he's being made fun of. He thinks he's like part of the group, but no. you're all laughing at him, not with him. No, but that was the thing. Like He wouldn't he wouldn't be in any more movies with Sandler after that because he was like, I can't believe you did this to me, bro. We've been friends Which one? for the first Grown Ups. Like mm-hmm. all, if you go back and watch that movie, it's literally just an hour and a half of them bullying Rob Schneider in that really? fucking movie. Like, I like watched fifteen minutes of it. I want to say, and I'm like, this is terrible, and I turned it off. Well, I watched the second Grown Ups, and I like that movie a lot more because on this one they spread the jokes around. Mm-hmm. They're making fun of Kevin James. They're making fun of Ken, uh, 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 David Spade. They're making fun of Chris Rock, Adam Sandler. It was like in the first one they were all just ganged up on Rob Schneider. I was like, how could they possibly have wrote this? Yeah, like. I I'll have know. to rewatch it. I never like thought of it that way, but but yeah, Schneider told Sandler he was like, "Man, I think you're a shitty friend, and like you've been doing this to me for a while." So he wasn't in movies for a long time. I know. Uh, yeah, I noticed that. I seen him pop up recently. Yeah, he just popped up at one of them, and he but... was old as fuck. I'm like, damn, I ain't seen him in a minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, his stand up. He's like, man, I'm 50 years old, and I was just like, damn, Rob, you are, aren't you? Yeah, like, it's kind of sad. But it's kind of sad. He plays the same. Dick character in this one. Yeah. Is this like his starting? I wonder if this is like his starting out. 
it's 96 so this is before he did the shit like right around the time he did judge dread this mm-hmm. is like his takeoff point yeah like when everybody started recognizing him mm-hmm. i would imagine yeah but i like him in this movie he's funny like, yeah he's pretty amusing like i said this movie's so like safe like everyone's just funny enough to have a good time right but it's not like groundbreaking comedy <laughs> Oh, no, 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 by any means. But I said, it's a stupid, fun movie. I enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, The fucking, the best part of this movie is when they're fucking, with the whales. And Kelsey Graham's like, I want you to play the tapes of the whales. So the submarine doesn't think it's a submarine. They think it's a whale. And Harlan Williams just goes. (laughs) (laughs) Me and my wife were actually, like, (laughs) dying during that part. Because that was the funniest part. And that's one of those parts that I, like, remembered as a kid. I'm like, I remember that. That shit had me rolling to this day. I just thinking about it is fucking making me laugh. Like I like that they put the guy with the biggest ears as satellite. Like uh, yeah. I don't know. I just thought that was pretty amusing. He can I, hear everything because he has the big ears. It's such an like a nineties joke. I just think it's funny because like he just starts like saying shit from radio stations. J one oh five, the buzz. <laughs> Cause he's been shocked. And then even Kelsey Grammer's got a line in the movie. He's like, How many watts has that boy been hit with? <laughs> So this movie was kind of like, like aside from the jokes, kind of boring because they're just playing war games. Yeah, it's not even really like, a, I don't know, like there's nothing at stake in this movie. Right. Yeah. You know? It's like, oh, you won't get promoted if you fail. <laughs> Big well, fucking the, deal. Like you won't lose your life. Well, the back the, the the overview of the movie is, you know, Kelsey Grammer is a, a Navy like lieutenant or whatever. He's. He's not an admiral, obviously, because he's not like you know doing it. But he should be. But mm-hmm. like he's a fuck up, and everybody knows he's just a partier and stuff like that. Like he's got a tattoo of a, I think it's like a submarine on his dick or something. Doesn't it's he? a it's a tattoo of like it says an something. anchor or something. I don't, I don't know. know. He has a tattoo on his dick, and it's a running joke. In and through throughout the navy, so like nobody takes him serious, and they put him in this rinkadink ass ship with these ragtag group of barely make it. And uh, they get tell them like, hey, if you win, you know, if you win, uh, if you win these war games with this crew and this ship, we're gonna put you on this big badass battleship with the best crew and all this and that. Right. So he's just like takes it a stride because he's a good time guy, you know. And that's pretty much the whole movie. And of course, the admiral that's playing the pro the antagonist is like, what's that? Do? Oh, it's Bruce Dern, ain't it? Yeah. It is Bruce Dern. Yeah. Yeah, he's good in this too. He plays a good cock. He always has. You got sand, Django. I'll give you that. Like, it's hard now to go back and watch him and stuff like this. And then mm-hmm. you see, like, the other side. <laughs> He's good in uh, that other one we watched, too, from Tarantino. The Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, really? Yeah. Remember? He He's the one that owns the ranch when Brad Pitt goes out there. Oh right, yeah, yeah the one yeah. that Dakota Fanning's like he's not gonna wake up. I fucked his brains out. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I do remember that. God, Dakota's come a long way too from her acting. Like holy shit, I don't want to think of her saying things like that. I know, right? That's like man on fire right there. You know what I mean? Like she's just a little girl, <laughs> and now she's just an adult saying terrible things on movies. I'm like, I don't like that at all. She's on this show on fucking TBS or TNT with uh, Dracula. The new Dracula. Mm, I don't. I don't know, but it's called like the the mechanist or some shit. I don't know, but like or something like that. But it's like a murder mystery in the thirties or or eighteen hundreds, maybe. I don't yeah. fucking know, but like it looks crazy as shit. Like five hundred year gap there. The yeah, I, I don't know. Man. To 1800s. <laughs> it's an old timey show. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Horses, probably. horses and carriches and shit. Yeah, that's how old. Probably like the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. it's like Jap the Ripper type shit. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, <laughs> is that, she like really dirty in there too? Yeah, she looks like she's dealing with murder and sex and all that. Like oh, part she, of the preview, she's like, oh, throws her head back. I'm like, no, Dakota, no. <laughs> yeah, right. like, where's Grizzly Bear? <laughs> what are you doing? Because like yeah, that's the thing with these child actors, man. You see them grow up, and then the people are like, oh, she's hot now. And I'm like, I can't see it. Like. It's like the Molson twins, man. Like, I don't find them attractive. No, not at all. Oh, my God. Have you seen them? They have, like, I don't know. They're just too skinny. Yeah, because they're all, like, fucking cooked up and rich and just Can't not say eating shit. You don't shit. know that. You don't know what they're doing. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I don't know them, but I know. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you just can't, you can't <laughs> slander people. The only the only one making money in that Olsen family now is the fucking one place uh, Scarlet Witch in the MCU. 
Which is crazy, bro. That's their older sister. And now that I know that, like, I can't unsee the other ones mm-hmm. out of her. And then they show pictures of all three of them. And I'm like, and you were the ugly one that didn't get on Full House. They didn't let you in Full House. The twins will take the older one. Yeah, and get rid of yeah them. that's what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe in 20 years. Maybe. <laughs> The one that always gets me is uh, Ariel Winter. The oh, Modern Family. Modern Family. I cannot watch those like so older guilty, bro. So guilty. Older episodes. I feel so dirty because she turned into such a like good looking woman that it's like holy fuck, dude. Yeah. You were like twelve when I started watching the show. Right. Like God. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Breaking that. So one thing I hate about this fucking movie was it had to turn it, but it's like a 90s trope. It had to turn it into like a romance because it has the. Oh, she's the bad, though. I forget her name, but she's oh bad. God. The, yeah, the woman was. lead in this. Yeah. yeah. But um, she's she has done simulations, but this is her first submarine. Yeah. Uh, running an actual submarine. She scrapes the floor. Yeah. And then they end up hooking up by the end of the movie. And that's kind of the thing that I hate. I hate those like you forced romantic tropes, but, um, is it true about the tattoo? Well, yes. Did you know what well, actually was true? Cause I had to look this up. You know how they said they won't let women on. She's like, they won't let women on submarines, but they're, I looked it up. They didn't start letting women on submarines until 2012. You know why? <laughs> I'm scared of what you're going to say. What? Oh, it's as bad as you think. Gang rape. What? Yeah. You have fucking 100 dudes on a fucking... I don't, I don't think that's what it is. It's exactly what it is, bro. Look it up. <laughs> you throw a fucking piece of steak in a, in a lion pit, what do you think is going to happen? Like It's so awful. It's 60 dudes in a cramped up little metal tube. Yeah, and they're months. all just waiting to like rape a woman. I'm not saying that first day they'll do it, but like after a month? She could be the ugliest bitch in the world. She's going to start looking good. I mean, you're not wrong, like, being attracted to a woman, but they're not all going to gang around <laughs> these navies. That's people. why they didn't allow it, because the soldiers in wartime are fucking animals. Like, <laughs> pull into a port. That's yeah. terrible. I mean, why else? Why else? Yeah. Oh, women can't handle lower depths of the sea? Like, Yeah, because uh, uh, we were super curious about that. We're like, it's 1996 in this movie. Like, I'm sure women were allowed on ships. No, it wasn't even... Yeah, it was, it was gang rape for sure. Like, Stop saying that. Even if it's not the official reason, <laughs> like you know it was. Like we got to put at least five of you on there so they can at least you know have a choice. <laughs> have to run through the options. Not just oh, straight. We're all time. raping her tonight. Like I don't know, man. I got to move past this. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Be a grown up, bro. I can't get on board with this. <laughs> Well, maybe it was like when women like tried to join the Marines and shit. They were just like, "Oh, women's periods or something." Or I, that's what I was thinking. I'm it like, might have been some superstitious, superstitious bullshit, but I think it was the gay rape <laughs> uh, for sure. So yeah, it this movie just made me think of Major Pain the whole time. Yeah, kind of. Because I grew up with Major Pain, and I fucking love Major Pain. I still watch it to this day, and it's that like. General has a ragtag of groups trying to whip them into shape, and they succeed. I think I like this one more because I didn't enjoy the kids in Major Pain. You didn't? I didn't think they were very good actors, the kids were. Because I think when movies like that, when you have to use children and, and an adult to play off of, you have to have like like role models. Like Nick Lovin and that fucking, uh, the little kid. I did like role models. He's model. hilarious. Fucking hilarious. You have to have that good same energy. And that's one thing that I liked about Cop Out was that little kid. Yeah. Fucking yeah. hilarious. Um, and, uh, but like the kids in major pain, like, I don't know. They just, I don't know. You know, I didn't think they were that good personally. I mean the, the smallest kid, he wasn't great. Nah, he's adorable. That's, he's supposed to be adorable. Yeah. He was adorable. (laughs) I gotta go to the bathroom. You better hold it. I can't. (laughs) What'd you say to me? You little turd nugget. (laughs) Sorry. I love that movie. Nah, I mean, it's a good movie and I mean, it's classic. Yeah. I don't know. I like Dow Periscope because the adults, I guess, like they were better cast. Right. Everyone yeah. had their own little quirks. Like even oh, another part that I remembered is the um. I wish I could remember his name, but the the technician, <laughs> they were all playing like the pirate games. Oh yeah. He had a fucking piece of raw chicken on his shoulder. He's like, "Is that dinner? <laughs> it's my parrot." <laughs> don't lose that. I gotta cook it later. Right. Yeah. That was funny. <laughs> I remember that as a kid. Oh, that's when they were getting rid of Rob Schneider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making him walk the plank because he yeah. was uh, trying to revolt. Yeah. 
Irby, Irby, Irby. Kelsey Grammer was great in this movie. He though. was. He was really good in this movie. He was very enjoyable. And I think that's why I loved it so much when I was a kid, because it was something other than watching him play fucking Frasier. Yeah. Like, that's all I had known him for up until that point was like, oh, it's the guy from Frasier. That's still all I really know him for. And Cheers. Cheers. He I never really the same wa- fucking guy in Cheers. Yeah, I never really watched Cheers. I, I went back and watched it when I got older, just because yeah. like I was. It's one of those. Shows. It's one of those shows that I saw on, but I never like watched. It's always a good idea though. Like if you got a bar that just knows your name when you come in, mm-hmm. man, Norm. Uh, yeah, if you're an alcoholic. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously <laughs> it it's sad, but it's funny too. Like Woody Harrelson got his show start on that show. Mm-hmm. I just like uh, my favorite part about Cheers has nothing to do with the actual show. It's from Ted. Where they're talking to fucking, uh, he's like, you want to come over and watch the Chia's box set? All they do is talk shit about each other in the commentary. <laughs> and Ted dances is like, what was your question? Was there cocaine on the set of Cheers? Uh, are there naked dicks in gay porn? <laughs> 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 what was your other question? Was I, <laughs> was I popular? <laughs> I was Mayday fucking Malone. <laughs> I was Ted dancing. I was the king of the fucking 80s. No, I was beloved. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, God, if that was true, like, how fucking great would that be? I know. And he's like, Woody Harrelson's smallest dick I've ever seen on a man. <laughs> <laughs> that shit had me rolling, dude. I was like, that is fucking great, man. But, like, yeah. Oh, um. <laughs> I love the first Ted, man. That is by far one of the best movies ever made. It really is. I, I rewatched it recently. I would love to say I love Ted 2 that much, but it's just not as good. Like, it's just really not. <laughs> Is that a shit? <laughs> Is that a shit on my floor? That's my buddy John, not the lobster, the guy running it. <laughs> I know you all slow me all. You owe me lobster money. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, the first Ted's fucking great, man. It's amazing. Like Seth MacFarlane, I love Family Guy and shit too. Like I, I love everything Seth MacFarlane does. Well, not everything, but. Good, good bit of it. Yeah. What do you not like? Uh, it's something that I've noticed he does like periodically through all his shit. The fucking musical numbers, like, yeah. knock that shit off, bro. You know, I've noticed that with like. But he's like big into show tunes and shit, dude. Well, South Park is too. The creators of South Park, they yeah. always do like a show tunes thing. I wonder why that is. Because they're secretly gay or something, bro. <laughs> just, I like show I tunes. Thought, I'm I not thought gay. Seth MacFarlane was gay for years, bro, just because of how well he did Stewie and everything. And but he's banged a lot of good looking women, like oh, I'm sure, like famous women, like. But it was like, yeah, he's a fag, and then he just bangs another A list celebrity, and it's just like, well, I mean, he's not that gay, <laughs> like shit. No one's that gay. <laughs> but I mean, the dude puts out hits, so like, yeah. Can't do it. I love Family Guy. I've watched Family Guy my entire life. Like, mm-hmm. I even liked American Dad. I I I I'll watch American Dad every now and then. Yeah, yeah. I even gave Cleveland Show a chance, and it wasn't even that great. Yeah, but, it was. It had his moments. Yeah, I it blew my mind that I did not know that a Dwight dude played Cleveland mm-hmm. that whole time. He just said he wouldn't do that voice anymore because he feels like it should go to a black actor. Oh, that's. Nice. I had no idea. I was like, I'm fucking shocked. <laughs> Like, oh, hi, Peter. You know, like, I don't know. <laughs> just thought it was a soft spoken black guy. I didn't know it was a fucking white dude doing it the whole time. I know, that's a new form of blackface, huh? I, I guess. Well, he felt guilty as shit about it. He's just like, yeah, I just feel like I feel like it should go to a black actor. I'm like, bitch, you played that role for 20 years. You're right paid. Now. Like, you're good now. You only feel now bad. Now you feel bad time. about it? Like, okay. Give nah. all that money back. How yeah, bad do you really exactly. feel? Exactly. <laughs> Donate that money to black charities or, like, you know. Exactly. I mean, he probably did. Who knows? I mean, we don't. We don't know. Yeah. I didn't read the whole article. I just read that headline. Guy that voiced Cleveland says Feels it's bad. wrong. You know, like, <laughs> I was like, wow. You learn something every day. Yeah. But, uh, no, I guess this, it, it's a general movie. It's very funny. It's like, I just found it boring because I do not care about submarines. Like, unless you're into the Navy. Right. I don't feel like you care about this movie, but I mean, you like it, and I don't think you're into that. Nah, it's just, like I said, it's just a stupid, funny movie. Yeah. Characters are amusing. It doesn't, like, cross any boundaries. It's not groundbreaking. It's That's, just... It's just when you need a really good, like, deep laugh, boy, you throw that whale scene on, man, <laughs> and it's just magic. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> He's so into it, too. Like, it's perfect. He killed it. Like, they were like, Harlan, you're gonna make the movie with this shit, bro. Just go all out, dude. Oh, yeah. He he carried this movie on his back. 
because mm-hmm. I can't re- like between him, Rob Schneider, and like the cook. I oh, there was that one guy. The, the two guys that drive the sub are funny too. Mm-hmm. Um, they f- keep arguing. They bet on everything. You know, I lost 20 grand on that fucking shot you missed and it against Boston or whatever. Because I guess he was like a college ball player mm-hmm. or, or semi professional, something like that. And he's like, man, fuck you, man. I had a terrible game that night. Like, yeah, bro. I know. I lost a lot of money on you. <laughs> but yeah, those are good. Those are good. I like the, the old man in the back of the sub or whatever. Oh, I did like he's that. He's fucking he hilarious, is- too. Watch this. Watch this line. Right here. He puts the string on. Watch the string. And the sub's so old that you can literally see it condensing. That was terrifying. Yeah, bro. I would have had a fucking panic attack if right. I was really in there. And then um, they were trying to do the deep dive, mm. and it was just crushing it. And he waits till like a bolt flies off a wall, and he's like, all right, we're here. Yeah. Like, fuck everything about that. That terrified me. Well, I mean, that's that's another part of the movie that's funny because, I mean, let's be honest, that fucking sub they show from the outside, there's no way that bitch is water. No, they right. uh, they, to- they towed that. It's a real submarine. Right. It's, it didn't run, though, so they right, towed right. it around the movie. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's no way that bitch could ever have, you know, went underwater mm-hmm. or any of that shit, but, like, it's a funny movie, so. Yeah. Yeah, I like I said, it's not, like, an all-time favorite or anything. I did like the one guy. He uh he didn't want to be in the fucking army, so he was trying everything to yeah, be he's being a hard out. ass. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the guy on Mash, but not funny. Yeah, I don't know. I guess he was supposed to be the badass too. Yeah, and then he just ends up being Rip Torn son in that movie. Yeah, he's in that too. Shit, there's a lot of big timers in that there. Was movie. this is like Rip Torn, Bruce Dern, Kelsey. There's a lot of big big name guys in that one. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah, I mean, it's not like an all-time favorite or anything, but when I saw it, I hadn't seen it on DVD. That's why I bought it. That's why a lot of the movies I buy. Like, yeah. If I've never You're seen like, it oh, on shit, DVD. I ain't seen this in a while. Exactly. If I see it on DVD and I can get it for next to nothing, I'm get that shit. Yeah, and I'm the opposite. I'll look for it online and pay like $100 for a fucking movie. Oh, I do have you another gift, and I don't know. You probably own it too, but I got you a demolition, man. Oh, fuck. Yeah. On Blu-ray, DVD. Oh, calm down, killer. It's not on Blu-ray. All right. <laughs> but I got you Demolition, man, because I remember we were talking about it when we were talking about Dread. And I was like, I don't know if he owns it or not, but I'm going to take a shot in the dark. Uh, I own it. Do you? Yeah. Damn it. So, <laughs> he's, oh, that's why you're asking about the Blu-ray. Oh, I don't have it on Blu-ray. Yeah, I know. I, I would have took the Blu-ray. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I didn't find it on Blu-ray. <laughs> but it was unopened, bro. Oh, that's cool. How crazy is that, though? Uh, yeah, like, that's that's a keeper. Because Demolition is my like favorite tough guy I, movie. I haven't owned it. Like I've owned, I, I've had it for a while too. But mm-hmm. I saw it and I was like, ah, man, I'll get another copy for Greg. Oh yeah. Well, I appreciate you thinking of me when you go out yeah. doing your thing. You know what's funny is you asked about that Richard Gere movie for how long, and I f- saw it every weekend, bro, for months. Mm-hmm. The second I went to go back and get it for you, I haven't seen it since. Like it's so fucking weird how that shit goes. Yeah. Right. Like, um, my boy Washi asked me about Wild Boys, that's St- uh, Steve-O and Chris, Con- or whatever his name Chris is. Chris Pontius. Pontius, yeah. He wants that show on DVD, which I used to see it all the time, man. Yeah, I like, remember. I could see that everywhere. Three, four seasons of Wild Boys, you know, on DVD, and, like, I can't find none of them bitches now. Mm. It's fucking nuts. Speaking of, have you seen the new, uh, do you watch Steve-O's new, like, uh, YouTube or whatever? I see bits and parts of it where he's like telling stories about when he was on drugs and shit. Mm-hmm. I've seen some of them. He has a new like jackass. Does he? Mm-hmm. He sells it on his website. It's like all everyone got back together and did another jackass. They call it something else. They don't call it jackass though. It's like reckless. Huh. Yeah. Just if you're curious and you want to watch that stuff, it's on his website. Is Knoxville a part of it? Because yeah. really, it's everyone except obviously Ryan Dunn. The people that did, yeah, that's crazy. I wanted to check it I out. I figured they Jackass Four would make money. You know what I mean? I know right now because people can't go to the theaters, but like, if they would have made another movie, it would have went. Oh, definitely. Went the three D one was great. Mm-hmm. Well, it's pretty much what this is. They're just doing like a self release. Yeah, that's <laughs> weird. Um, what you gonna call it? Old Jeff Tremaine. The guy that created it with Johnny Knoxville. I wonder if they had a falling out or something. I don't know. Because he directed all those. Yeah. He directed a lot of the show, too. Guy's crazy as shit. They're, I mean, they all got to be. I know. That shit. Crazy rich, just because. Dude, but you know, you think about it, though, like, 
out of as far as entertainment goes and as far as like what actors do like actors act their ass off but when they're getting their ass beat in a scene they're not taking that pain bro Nope. But they're still getting paid $60 million right. to play that part. And the guy that's These getting... guys are literally stapling their nuts to their leg and getting like five grand. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I feel like they earn their right to be called famous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Johnny Knoxville, especially that dude's broke like half the bones in his body making movies and shit. Like he's like, I always do my own stunts, even when they don't want me to. And I'm like, I bet you do, bitch. You're crazy <laughs> as fuck, dude. But uh, I follow Johnny Knoxville <laughs> on Instagram, and he's always putting some crazy shit on there. Still man. doing it. What's funny is he always has those times where he's like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then he keeps doing it. <laughs> but I guess if that's what you're known for. I have a fun fact uh, that when him and Butterbean box in that department store in the first one, like mm-hmm. he almost died from that shit. He did. Like, Butterbean knocked him into the next fucking week, man. Yeah. And then he hit his head on that fucking jewelry counter on the way down. That's what did it. But. He had like double concussions or some shit. Yeah. Busted his head open. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you just did that for fucking what, bro? Like next to nothing. I'm sure those guys are damn sure uninsurable. On a oh, movie they are. Set, I, you know what I mean? That's like, what. Well, we're gonna make another jackass. We don't have enough fucking money to make another jackass. <laughs> just movie. for the insurance alone. Yeah. Do you know how much it would cost to get you motherfuckers all in the same room on an mm-hmm. insurance policy? Nope. Next to fucking impossible. <laughs> that, it makes you wonder. That's like probably why they don't do them anymore. Like. I'm sure it's just too big of a risk, bro. We're not, we're not. Your family's not suing us for everything because you die, yeah, doing something you wanted to do that we probably tried to talk you out of doing. Like, uh, what's that one where they're trying to, you try to ride that rocket off the thing, mm, and the yeah. fucking bolt flies out like an inch above where his leg was, where it, it took his leg completely off. Yep. He's like, I almost died, and he's <laughs> laughing it off like, God, dude. The fact that most of them are still alive is... It's like, crazy, bro. And it's the, really crazy. Ryan Dunn died from a car accident. Right, it ain't like sons. something he did. You yeah. know what I mean? That, that's just a tragedy any way you want to look at it, but yeah. And it's city because uh, I feel like that's why Bam, Man, Bam Margera fell off for a while. Because like, that was his best friend. Yeah. Well, that's what I heard. His alcoholism got like really, really Out bad after at that, that point, yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, I guess he's doing all right now because I see stuff. Well, I don't see him in stuff, but I see him, like, yeah. pictures I think he's shit. trying to get his life back together. Like, I mean, you think about all those guys. They had their time at the top, bro. Like, the ter- the t- mid-2000s were their shit from, mm-hmm. like, 05 to 10. Or really, like, 01 to 10, man. Yeah, me and the... They all had their own fucking shows on MTV. They right. were in the movies. And we all watched it. Like, yeah. anybody from our generation watched the shit out of that. Like, the girl I dated at the time, that's all we watched. Was My homeboy lived it for fucking Viva La Van, man. That was his yeah. favorite show. I, I, I hate that I liked it so much, because... It's he, really a terrible show, bro. Like, I go back is. and watch it now, and I'm like, wow, but why the fuck did I watch this shit? Yeah, that? Bam is a kind of a douche. Yeah, a huge <laughs> one, bro. Like, who terrorizes their parents that much, bro? Right. Like, But it made money, dude. Mm-hmm. They were fucking geniuses. Like, they look like idiots, but they were geniuses. Yeah. Like, well, they were marketed right. And, like, that shit wouldn't fly now, bro. Fuck like, no. I mean, it kind of does on YouTube for them. Certain stuff. Yeah. But there's a difference between being YouTube famous and being like famous, famous. Yeah, yeah, these yeah. Guys were. Like, these yeah, guys, these YouTubers aren't going to ma- meet that type of fame. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, YouTube fame is still like, look at them fucking Paul brothers. They're fucking idiots, man. Mm-hmm. And they're millionaires. Like, yeah. I'm not knocking the YouTube hustle by any means, but. I'm just saying. Like, it's a different kind of thing. And My parents knew. Yeah, who they know who was, they are. Yeah, yeah. But no one, my nobody knows don't. who do pie pie or whatever the fuck his name is. PewDiePie. Nobody, <laughs> yeah, nobody knows who the fuck that is. Right. Like, yeah, but. Yeah, I don't know, man. The Jackass was a is an interesting time in history. If you look back on it, it is pretty crazy. Especially now, like you said, like because it's been over for a little bit. It is crazy to know that that's what entertained us for so long. Like it makes you think, like that's why people hate Americans. <laughs> no, right? You know, think of just imagine Korean hackers for months trying to get into our satellites, and they get the first bit of TV, and it's the Kardashians and Jackass. <laughs> They're like, the, the, the people are fucking circus. Look at these people. We can't fuck with them. Like, look at them. And now that we have the internet, everyone knows. Oh, yeah, yeah. I it's saw, just like, I saw look at these thing. fucking idiots. This is what entertains them. Like, you know what I mean? I saw this thing online. It was about the whole coronavirus. She's like, when can we start flying inter- internationally? And someone responded like, hopefully never. We're actually hoping we can build a wall around America so you don't breed outside of your <laughs> st- country. <laughs> For real. And it's crazy because, like, I know that's what they think because, like, oh, definitely. they see that, they're like, oh, yeah, they're all that way. They're yeah. all dumb. 
They're all just dumb. All a bunch idiots. of Trump fucking supporters. Yeah, they all just think we got fucking trucker hats, just hanging out in the front yard, <laughs> sitting on a couch in the front yard. Have you seen the a mural of Donald Trump on I four? What? It's a fucking huge like Donald Trump mural. Well, you, you know I live in the country, you know, like I'm not in a major city or anything like that. And uh, let me tell you something, man, they, they, all the shit they're giving to people about Confederate flags and Trump flags. Is, uh, yeah, bro, them shits are still waving strong out there where I'm at, bro. <laughs> like, I don't, I wouldn't be brave enough to drive through my neighborhood with a fucking Biden sticker. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I vote blue, any of that shit. Like, they would shoot your shit up, man, mm-hmm. going down the road. Because they, they, they love their fucking Trump, man. Yeah. They love them flags. It's really scary to think about, man, like how just people like, I don't know, you got to move on. Yeah. You got to get, you got to move with the times a little bit, you know, Jesus Christ. But yeah, dude, the, the, that's not even the real Confederate flag. Yeah, bro, it's close enough. Like, they had their time. Like, <laughs> let's move on. I know, it kills me because like, you'll see a black, uh, like a black person, like that flag's racist and then you'll have a white person. No, it's not. What? <laughs> You can't tell somebody what. When's the last time you saw that flag? When the South was its own country? Yeah, exactly. When the United States split in half. That's the last time that flag was popular. I don't know if they told you or not. We're we're back together now. (laughs) That shit's over with. It's been over with, bro. And like, you know, like, you'll see like, if there's a thousand comments, they take a racist statue down. They tear down a Confederate statue. Right. There's a there's a million comments about, man, that's good, man. That's what I'm talking about. Moving forward. Then there's always like 15 or 20 of those dumb asses that are just like, oh, it's just not right taking a piece of history down. And right. Shit like that. Like, bro, are you fucking with me right now? Right. You don't even know who that guy was. Like, Yeah, you didn't know about him until two weeks ago. But it's like the whole thing. Like, if they had a Hitler statue over in Germany, you think they're going to keep that thing up? No, that shit is no. coming down immediately. <laughs> immediately, man. Not even in the good part. Not even the old parts of Germany where they're like. No, we just got to keep it up to remind everyone history. No, let's not. I mean. I don't think you should forget about those atrocities. No, but no, no. You shouldn't but you don't have monuments to them either. Exactly. You know what I mean. <laughs> I don't think anybody should ever forget about the Holocaust because of how terrible it was. You know? Right. And that's how, you know what I mean? When people forget, that's when that shit happens. Exactly. You don't need a monument to be reminded of uh, history. And that's another thing, like, people talk about with police brutality and stuff. Like, it, they're like, oh, I'm so tired of hearing about it. You need to hear about it. That's the only way change is going to come is mm-hmm. if you get tired of seeing it, you get tired of seeing it. Like, I get it. You know, like a lot of a lot of people are gonna like, oh, it doesn't have anything to do with me. It has something to do with all of us, man. Yeah. Because even if you're not that person that time, it could happen to you. Right. You know what I mean? Because I feel like if you have a, just a straight evil person, it ain't gonna matter what color you are. If they're gonna be evil, they're gonna be evil. Exactly. But I don't know why we're getting political. But I don't know, man. We went way right in this yeah, one. I don't exactly. know what the fuck happened to this episode, bro. <laughs> God damn it! It says Patton Oswalt was in this movie. Where was he in this movie? Film debut of comedian Patton Oswalt. I don't remember him in this movie. Uh, oh, he was. I think he was one of the little do boys for the other side. You know, with a, when Bruce Dern gets in his own submarine and crew. Mm-hmm. I think he was part of their crew. Oh, I see. I think he's their little headphone guy or something like that. Maybe. Maybe. I feel like I've seen him in the movie. I'd have to rewatch it because I don't. I didn't even recognize him. I mean. Hmm. It's hard to miss Patton Oswalt, but That's he's what just I was paying attention. To, uh, yeah. Or maybe he's only in it for like a split second. Probably. It just like pans. <laughs> or maybe like you don't even see his face. You just hear him yell something yeah, from right. the back. Dive, Captain, dive. <laughs> Is that Patton Oswalt? <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't put my face in it. Uh, just my voice. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> but it wasn't, like I said, it was kind of like a softball movie because yeah. it's just so like harmless and. And it does, like, reminisce about the 90s. Like, I grew up on a lot of these kind of movies. It's just a good, fun movie, bro. Like, yeah. you throw it on it Like you said, it's just a good family movie just to have fun with. Yeah. This is definitely something my dad would have put on when I was a kid. Uh, I think I went and saw this movie with my dad. In theaters? I think so. Holy crap. You know what's crazy is I worked at that two dollar theater, like, when I was in high school, but I we used to go there for years before I worked there. You would have been eight. Well, yeah. I guess you could go to the movies at eight. What am I thinking? <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I definitely saw this in theaters, though. Mm-hmm. 
Because, yeah, this, I mean, like I said, I haven't seen this movie a ton on DVD. And I got bought this movie like four years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been a while since I'd watched it. I watched it when I bought it just because I hadn't seen it. Still got a good laugh out of it. Yeah. But I don't really have a I was, whole lot more. You know, to this say. wasn't the original movie I was going to give you. I was going to give you King of New York, but I was like, I can't give you two back to back gangster movies in a row. I mean, yeah, I guess you're right. Because New Jack's, because like you would have watched New Jack City and then you would have watched this and be like, he literally just gave me the same fucking movie with a white dude. <laughs> right. But I love King of New York so much because of how good Christopher Walken is in it. Like, mm-hmm. he's so cold, bro. It's so it's chilling. Yeah. Like, yeah. Did I've, you ever see Suicide Kings with him in it? I don't know. I can't remember off the top of my head, but... He plays the eerie motherfucker in that one, man, and yeah. he chills me more in this. And I saw Suicide Kings way before I saw The King of New York. Yeah. When I saw King of New York, I was probably in high school, and I was just like, man, I've never heard of this movie, man. I was like, looking at all the people in it, I'm like, damn, bro, this is a cast. Yeah. But it's one of those early 90s movies that just kind of like, if you knew, you knew. If you don't, you don't. Yeah. I didn't... It, it went past me somehow. I don't know why. Biggie even raps about Frank White, which is Christopher Walken's character in mm-hmm. this movie. So that's that's pretty cool. It's a little fun fact for when you do watch it. Nice. Is but, that going to be the one you give me next? Probably. Unless I find something between here and then, I feel like, you know, you'll hate more. <laughs> nah. I'm trying to get another punch out of the death box, son. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm going to give you one you really hate so I can get another shot of the death box. <laughs> I, added, I actually added one to it. Did you? Oh, hatchet too. Oh, yay. I hope I pick it. I hope I fucking pick it, bro. <laughs> Just so you got to sit through it again. Just so you got to sit through it again. Um, I did buy one. I'm not sure if it's like, oh, oh, my God. I have to tell you. I'll get to that in a second. So yeah. I bought Guyver. I watched this as a kid. I don't think it's a death box movie. It might be one that I just give you because I genuinely enjoy this movie. It's a childhood favorite of mine. But... I've been wanting to watch one of these bad movies, and I wanted to, I got one that I've seen already, like Splice. I saw mm. it when it came out, so it wasn't like ruining anything. And I was like, hey, babe, you want to watch it for me? She's like, I don't want to watch a bad movie. I'm like, it's not a bad movie per se. She was fucking pissed at me that she watched this movie. Just wasted an hour and a half of my life on this shit. Yeah, she was like, I can't believe you made me watch that. She's like, don't tell anyone that we watched this movie. <laughs> She's like, I don't want anybody to know that I watched this movie. It's so weird how um, Adrian Brody picks his movies, bro. Because he's been in some fucking hits. Yeah. And then he's been in some that it's just like, what the fuck, bro? Like, like Splice. Yeah. Like Summer of Sam, he's great in that movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I loved him on fucking Peaky Blinders, man. I still need to watch he that. He killed it in that. He's only on it for one season, but he's great in that one. Mm-hmm. Uh. I liked him in King Kong. Yeah. The Peter Jackson one. I feel like that movie wasn't bad. They just needed to cut like two hours out of that bitch. But yeah, um, I didn't expect you to like fall in love with this movie, but I didn't think you'd hate it either. I didn't hate it. I just... It was a nice change of pace. Because I gave you, I think I've given you like action, action, gangster action. And then yeah, like, you, I was it, like, I gotta throw a comedy in there, man. Yeah. I think the last one was fucking Idle Hands. Was the last comedy I gave you? I think so. God, nah, I feel bad. Like that's that's like not even that great a movie. I figured you'd love it though. I was like, this is like a movie Greg would love. Man. I actually have been wanting to like go back and watch it because it was like a fun little movie. Like I hated it at first, but then I'm like, hey, it's a fun little. One. Next time I uh, find that bitch laying around on DVD, I'll get it for you. <laughs> I like it just because of Seth Green and uh, oh fuck is his name, the one that plays Fulton. <laughs> And Mighty Ducks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I forget his name off the top of my head, but I love those two in that movie. Like, yeah. They're hilarious. Yeah, because I keep thinking about it. Like, there's parts in that movie that I was like, ah, it's funny. You think we should clean the microwave out? Yeah, bro. While we're at it, let's just clean the whole house. Right. Like- <laughs> you have, though, like, New Jack City, John Q, Last Man Standing. Yeah, Last Man Standing. I remember giving you that one. And Gotti. I was just like, yeah, I gave you Gotti. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's just been gangster and action, so I was like, I gotta throw a comedy in here, man. Change it up a little bit. <laughs> Actually, Miss March was the last, like, comedy. Yeah, and you man. hated that. I fucking hated Miss March. Horse Dot and Pig. That's the... 
That's the only funny part of that whole fucking movie to me. Well, I, I like I said, and uh, when I watched that that show they used to have, the whitest kid you know, mm-hmm. like I used to think that show was hilarious. I saw some skits; it was pretty funny. Him and Pete Holmes, man, Pete Holmes. I still watch Pete Holmes. That bitch cracks me up, bro. He has a podcast, like a super popular podcast. Sorry. Yeah, I, um, that that makes sense because like he's uh, one of those guys that he could just talk and he, like, he comes up with some funny ass shit. And like, he's super inle- intellectual too. Yeah, he's a lot smarter than people, you know, I guess, I mean, I guess if you're a fan of him, you would know, but yeah, mm-hmm. like, I wish I would have got onto his show when it was on TV, man, because like, you know, they canceled it and shit, but it used to come on TBS after Conan, mm-hmm. and uh, I watched some of the skits he did on there, and they're fucking great. Like, yeah, he's hilarious. And he's the bad man, dude. He the did, Batman like, I is... can't watch the Dark Knight trilogy anymore, because he's fucking murdered Christian Bale's accent so bad, bro, like. <laughs> Swear to me. <laughs> I can't help it, dude. He just does it so well. Like, he does. This is a gun? <laughs> <laughs> I love that shit so much. <sighs> I might go over and watch that bitch soon. I know. Like, I was just thinking that, They got too. a super cut. It's like an hour and a half, bro. It's the greatest thing you'll ever see. Like, you'll die laughing at somebody. <laughs> yeah, just go Pete Holmes, Batman, and just watch. Just binge watch all of them because they're fucking hilarious. And he changes it. Like, I don't know how he didn't get fucking sued by Warner Brothers, man. Because, <laughs> like, God, dude. They just straight ripped those fucking movies, all three of them, dude, right down the middle. Yeah. So fucking good. <laughs> Um, I've given you a, to me, it's kind of a comedy. Right. It's Murder Party. Yeah, I'm looking at the cover of it before I came over here, and I'm thinking to myself, like, what is this movie going to be about? Yeah. Obviously, murder and a party. But <laughs> the dude is in a fucking wetsuit, or not a wetsuit, but a, like a, a meat-cutting outfit, it looks like. Well, he he he's going to a Halloween party, and he makes his costume, and he tries to make like a knight. Mm. Out of box, cardboard gotcha. boxes. And he's holding two chainsaws, and I'm like, all right, well, this is going to be different. Yeah. So, um, Do you remember that movie Green Room I told you to watch, where the punk band performed? You told me about it, but I did not see you that. watch it. I didn't see that. I was going to give you Guyver after this one, but I'm you, going to give you- give me Green Room? I'm going to give you Green Room after Murder Party, because nah. I thought you watched- I could have swore you watched it. I don't think so. I mean, I would have- I mean, yeah, I don't think I've seen it, so I'll watch it. That's super interesting. Don't watch it around your kids. Don't watch the green room around my kids? Yeah. I don't watch any of the movies you give me around my kids. <laughs> it's probably safe. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, don't even know if I should be watching it. Right. Like, that fucking, the last one, the one, the last one that kind of left me fucked up was the one with uh, Nick Cage. The, the, the Color Out of Space? Yeah, that one. <laughs> That one had me fucked up for a day or two just because there was so much crazy shit going on in that movie. I was just like, this, I, I'm going to need a day or two. Yeah, right. I had to go watch a couple of Nick Cage movies to get that taste out of that one out of my mouth. Like Safe ones like Con Air and shit. Yeah, was, right. Like, I, I love them. Did you watch Mom and Dad with Nicolas Cage? No, bro, but the fucking trailer for that shit looked insane, man. It's, the movie is just as insane as the trailer. I want to watch it just to like have seen it, you know, but like, it looks Nick so Cage crazy. goes past Nick Cage in acting on this movie. And I like Amanda Peet too, so mm-hmm. like, oh, it might be worth a watch, but it looks insane. How about this? We'll do Murder Party, and then we'll do Green Room, because I want to watch it, and it follow because it's the same directors. They oh, started out with Murder Party, then they did uh, Blue Ruin, which I haven't watched yet. I kept hearing good things. And then they did Green Room, which I did watch. Now, it fucked me up. Is he only do like horror movies and shit or like it's not they're not necessarily horror, they're more like thrillers than mm-hmm. horror. Um so we'll do those and then after that we'll do a death death box. Cause I've been wanting to do another death box movie too. Alright. So Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, we'll do that. And well, in the midst of all that, I talked to Mick and he said he wants to come back on, so probably next month we'll get together. I bet and I'm always down to talk to Mick, man. Yeah. Sh- shout out to Mick. I know. I know he's like a unspoken or a unseen third guest in this movie. We talk or show rather. Yeah, he uh we had a great episode with him. I like to uh we had a good one with Steve O too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve-O just doesn't like anything other than Star Wars. <laughs> Maybe we should bring him on to talk about uh, Mandalorian or something. Yeah. He'd love that. He Did would. you ever watch Mandalorian? Nope. You, you should watch that, bro. I was halfway through the first season, and my wife's like, I'm not interested. So, not yeah. first season, first episode. Right. 
I, I thought it got good. There's only like five or six. Mm-hmm. Well, the second one's the second season's about to come out. I can't wait. It's yeah. going to be super good. I'm I so pissed about Ozark, bro. Only getting one more season. But it's coming to an end. Like, I like to see closure. I'm mad, but I will, I like to see it end. I mean, I get it. It's like, how much more can you do to this family? Right. You know, because I feel like that's where all shows end up eventually. Mm-hmm. Like, you're just like, bro, what else can we put this character through? Yeah. They've They've gone to the bottom to the top back to the bottom you know like we've done all this mm-hmm. it's time to just give it a good ending well because it's like breaking bad went for what five seasons six or six seven, seasons like yeah that. it went for a while but, but it came to an end and that's what i like it was sad because you know that the show was so popular that it could have went longer mm-hmm. but it's like it felt like the right time exactly you know, like we've done everything we can with this guy well, it's kind of like Dexter went downhill, like after a certain part. You do have those shows that have that thing where they go a season or two longer than they should and mm-hmm. they end up shitting out Yep. and they don't even get a final episode or whatever. That's what sucks. That's what makes me mad about uh, Santa Clarita's diet. Me and my wife love that show. Yeah, my wife And it's wife never going to get an end. Yeah, she said that they kind of leave it at like a cliffhanger too. Yep. Well, not like that, but like they could have went so many other directions with mm-hmm. it. It's weird though because like... I had not just y'all, but like other people told me how much they like that show. And it's just weird that it didn't have enough views mm-hmm. to stay, you know what I mean, within that algorithm or whatever Netflix judges their shit by. Right. Because they do that with a lot of shows. Like it'll be doing really well and then they'll just get tired of it and be like, yeah, fuck it, we're not doing that anymore. Yeah. they. It's called the three season curse. You get three seasons and then they'll just cut you off. They don't even care. Yeah, because if you notice most of the Netflix shows that are on there. Or not Netflix shows, but most of the seasons and stuff on there, they're not Netflix shows, the ones that have four or five whatever seasons. Yep. Yeah, but if it's made by Netflix, you can almost guarantee that bitch is going to be done in three, yep. maybe four if you're lucky. Mm-hmm. You know that's what they're going to do to Stranger Things eventually. Like, that's another one I wouldn't mind coming to an end. People love that fucking show. Man. I like the first season, but the rest of it I could take it or leave it, honestly. I never got into it. Really? Yeah. Did you watch it? I've watched a couple episodes here and there, but like... Not enough to say I know anything about it. Like, I don't know. Old boy that plays Hellboy, David, uh, whatever his name is, mm-hmm. he does a good job on there, and the kids are good. I think everyone does a good job on yeah, it. Yeah, it's a well made show. I just, I don't know, man. Not your cup of tea. Well, it, that was the thing about it because Steve was like, bro, nostalgia, 80s shit, bro. It's like, I think you'll love that show. And I was watching it, and I was like, it's a very Goonies vibe. And yeah. Like, I don't well, know. Well, you liked that movie, Summer of 84. So, I did, I did. Like and it kind of has that vibe to it. Yeah. I don't know, man. And then I, I think it might have been too much going on for me. You got the little kid with powers and then the, 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 the dimension demons. And then and I was just like, all right, man, I'm good. Like, this, <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. You're not into the sci-fi aspect? I, I guess, I think it's, maybe it's because I'm getting older, bro. Because I used to be into shit like that, like hardcore, like anything sci-fi, I'm down, you know. But then, like, I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm getting older. And, Maybe uh, I've never really been into sci-fi. I'm more of a fantasy kind of person. Well, the big shit like Star Trek, for Star Wars, and shit like that. Like I, I love that. Mm-hmm. But when I was a kid, anime. I was really into anime. Um, I don't know, man. As I've gotten older, just kind of got away from the weirder shit. And yeah, I get that. More just into comedies and action movies. You and know, shit now. I noticed that about myself too. I'm not into like. Or I don't seek them out like I used to, but like super artsy movies. Yeah. I used to seek them out, but now I'm just like, yeah. I just want a good fucking... I really do, man. Like, I love a good story now more mm-hmm. than anything. And most of the movies I've watched in the last two years, like I've really... Probably the most I've ever verged away from what I would say my formula of movies are. Mm-hmm. Probably has something to do with your ass always <laughs> making me watch other shit, but... <laughs> I like it, man. There's nothing to to, to me better as a movie fanatic is finding a movie that's great that I did not know about. Yeah, yeah. Like when you stumble onto some shit at three in the morning. Oh my God, it's the best. It's like like finding gold Mm -hmm. almost in in my opinion, you know? Yeah. Or finding that movie you don't have on DVD for 50 Cent. Like it's like right there with it for me. Get that adrenaline rush. I do, bro. Like I bought Donkey Kong 64 today. For ten bucks, he wanted oh, twenty. Fuck. Yeah, he wanted twenty. I got it for ten. That's a good ass deal. Yeah, he's like, man, I can sell this bitch right now for forty five online. I was like, we ain't online, bro. We're right, right. here, right now. I got ten dollars. You I got, take it or leave it. That's what I told him. I said, I got ten bucks, bro. He's like, I like you, man. I want to sell it to you. I was like, well, then do it. 
I was like, you make that decision, bro. You're you're perfecting your haggling skills. And he's like, oh, I'll just have to double charge you next time. I was like, that's cool, bro, because I don't buy anything over a dollar from your ass. So, like, we're good to go. Sell me this game, and let's get out of here. Good for you. Yeah. I still It still sucks that I spent 10 though, because I don't usually like spending... $10 for Donkey Kong 64 is a fucking steal. That's what I thought, too. So yeah. I was like, I'm just going to take what I got out of it. Mm-hmm. I got Star Fox the other day. Nice. Yeah, I had a couple copies of 64 games because that's another problem I'm running into. Like, my memory's gone to shit. And I'll buy the same game three fucking times thinking that I need it and I have it. Yeah. So I took a couple of the copies I had up there. And with enough store credit, I got Star Fox 64. And I bought my son a Mario Yoshi, like one of the stuffed animals. Mm -hmm. He wants one of every color now. That's like his new thing. He's getting all the Mario plushes. That's what he wants. Yeah. So I got him one. And I got Star Fox, and uh, dude, they had ten Mega Man games on one PlayStation Two disc. Like the first ten for Nintendo, they had on PlayStation Two. So I bought that bitch too. Nice, it was like five bucks. But yeah, I, I just for taking those couple games out there, they gave me enough store credit that I could get what I wanted. <laughs> we should do that on the podcast. Just talk about your collection, like what you've been collecting lately, dude. Like on the on the back end of the. I mean, honestly, could, bro, because nobody watches the fucking halls anymore, bro. Like, <laughs> they do watch them. It's so fucking sad, dude. You're barely even putting them up. What are you talking about, bro? I, I, I put one every week for, like, the last month, dude. The last one, it will be two weeks tomorrow. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, and I'm going to put it up tonight. I got another one in the can ready to go. I'm going to put it up tonight. Oh, okay. They'll watch them. It's not, it's not that I don't enjoy doing it still. I still do, bro, like. I don't know, man, but a lot of it for me was just, like, the fact that people were still enjoying watching it. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I guess if 27 people are watching it, that's better than nothing. So yeah. I might keep giving it to them. Because well, I like still I, enjoy doing it either way. So like I said, I it just comes down to titling and so people can come across your video. And learning hashtags are a big thing, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, was, a friend told me about that yesterday. Yeah, somebody said I should use more hashtags, but... Oh, Zach wanted me to tell you that uh, he loves... Or he appreciates the shout outs we give him for one and two. He said that he wants to start uh, making comps for YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told him that, like, you're great at editing and shit. And, like, he should talk to you about it. Yeah. Because, you know, he's taking off with that shit. Mm -hmm. That motherfucker made a $1,000 sitting on his ass the other day, bro. Did he really? People be gifting his ass some serious donations on there. Damn. I told you he's got that personality. He does, bro. And he's like, that's what it is. He's like, I just got to do it. He's like, not all days are that good. Some days I only make 100. He's like a stripper. Dude, like. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, like, how much money do you need to make before you would decide, like, this is what I want to do? He's like, if I can get 5000 five thousand a month, he's like, that'll cover all my bills and then some. And he goes, and then I'll still be able to make my shit better. Mm-hmm. Dude, he's got fucking T-shirts, hoodies. I seen. Like, sponsors, bro. Yeah, I seen the girl. With the the sweater? That's his wife. Oh, that's his wife? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was like, shit, he's got merch and everything. Dude, I mean, he's killing it. I'm so happy for him, man. Yeah. And uh, he's like, oh, bro, the hate's so real, though. Like, He's like, friends are already like not talking to me anymore. Really? And shit. I was like, why? He's like, I don't know, man, because like, I guess they're just mad because like, shit's starting to work out for me. Like, That's how it is, though. I said, that. that's the saddest thing about it, bro. That's how you know a real fucking hater, bro. Cause they they're all good until you start to shine, and then it's like, oh fuck it. Yep. I never liked that guy, anyways. But. <laughs> and, yeah, they, the true friends start start to show up. I said, yeah, bro, you won't know what a real friend is until so, one of you gets successful. Like that's that's when you can tell who a real friend is. Mm-hmm. Well, that doesn't make any sense though. Like someone's being successful, I want to see them. I think what it was is uh, I think he had told me that that guy had talked him into streaming. Because he had surgery on his back, and he said he was down for like a month and a half. And that's when he played with the idea of, maybe I should stream, you know? Mm-hmm. And they said, this guy put him on a stream, and uh, Zach did was so funny on that dude's stream that people were asking about him. And then he made his own. So all those people that were watching that guy started watching Zach. Oh, I see. And, you know, now he feels some type of way. Like, you know, Zach should put him on or do whatever. And he's like, I've hosted your parties. I've hosted all this stuff. He's like, people just don't like your shit. They like mine. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. Right. 
I'm happy for him, man. Yeah, yeah I'm I want happy. him to keep going. I've been wanting them to do something like that. Well, maybe I'll talk to him one day and see if we can work something out. Cause yeah, and he said that uh, he said that he'd put the podcast up on his shit. Like you know, it'll pull up in a stream when people are looking at it. Mm-hmm. War with Cinema at YouTube, Spotify, yeah. shit like that. That's what I'm talking about. And I was like, yeah, man. I was like, we're all about growing, man. And I told him our idea, like how we wanted like our own media company. Mm-hmm. And like we just want a bunch of different stuff going on under us. Like, yeah, you know, I just want to make like a. I said, bro, you could have your own fucking thing for streaming, podcasts, all that. You just be under the umbrella, bro. Like that's the that's the goal. He's like, man, that's something that's really good, man. Y'all should do that. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, bro. Like, it's uh, that's what we're working for. Yeah, yeah. As soon as uh, we can start going out and meeting people. We'll start getting back on the collector's edition. Yeah, I definitely want to do that, bro. Because now I'm off every weekend. We can get together. We can meet up with people. Yes, we can. So. It'll be nice. It'll be nice just when the world gets back to doing anything, period, man. Mm-hmm. This shit, it's hard, like, you know, because we're very blessed in that aspect. Like, we still have jobs, bro. We right. still We haven't suffered like some of the people out here. Mm-hmm. But it does, I do miss doing regular shit, like going to the movies I know, going out to eat with my family for my birthday last night was so nice. Not wondering who's letting people inside, how many people. Calling ahead and stuff like Fuck, that. dude. Like, it's just such a, I don't know, man. It sucks. It's, yeah, this this whole year has been like a badass trip, bro. Right. Like, you just can't come down off of it. Like, it's been like, just fucking six months. What the hell? Like, yeah. Because, I mean, honestly, bro, like, right around the end of January, beginning of February is when, like, everything just started fucking closing, bro. Mm-hmm. One after the other. Yep. But times are tough, but we're tougher, dog. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll get through this shit one way or the other. Right. Well, next time we'll be doing a uh, murder party. Murder party. All right. Can't well, wait. See you then. Later, y'all.